without hot water. And developing right now, a new pill could be the latest tool in the fight against the coronavirus. Why researchers say it could keep more people out of the hospital and the next step in the approval process. And right now, Braves fans celebrating after clinching the division championship. We'll hear from the players as they get ready for the playoffs. We began at 1130 with breaking news coming out of Henry County. You are looking live at Woodland High School in Stockbridge, where sheriff's deputies are investigating what's being called a possible copycat incident. They say a student took a picture of a picture showing the trigger of a gun. School officials tell us they have not been able to determine where the photo was taken or if it's real. Now, earlier this week, a photo of a person holding a gun in what was believed to be a school bathroom was shared, sending the school on lockdown. Right now, the school is not on lockdown and parents are being told to not come to the school. Stay with 11 Alive on air and online for the very latest coming out of Stockbridge. Happening right now, a state fire marshal issues a safety notice about new violations discovered at an Atlanta apartment complex where a young man was killed in an elevator accident. This is video of a fire marshal leaving the building and handing out the notices to the media just about 30 minutes ago. 11 Alive's Latasha Givens is live near the complex on Highland Avenue. Well, Aisha, this is a copy of that notice that the fire marshal hand delivered about the boilers and more issues they found as a result. The hot water in the entire building had to be shut off. Now, residents tell us this letter leaves them feeling confused and less safe. Let's take a closer look at what it's in this letter. This letter from the state's insurance commissioner states inspectors have found, quote, numerous regulatory and safety violations involving the building's boiler and required emergency services elevator. It goes on to say, as a result, emergency services may be hampered. Residents and visitors should exercise due care and caution while on the premises. On September 13th, investigators say they examined the building's five boilers and found violations with each for allegedly being installed without permits or inspections. The state says it ordered ordered one to be turned off until it was inspected and permitted. One resident told us she's been without water for three days now and didn't have any idea why until this morning. She says not having an elevator and hot water is a major inconvenience. The building has been under scrutiny since Jamarcus McFarland died on August 31st after police say he became pinned between floors when the elevator suddenly dropped. Investigators say several factors may have played a role, including the total weight of the passengers inside the elevator and a possible elevator equipment failure. Investigators also found the elevator's inspection certificate was expired. Now, the building's owner is not only facing more than 15 violations, but also more than $12,000 in fines. We'll continue to follow this story and bring you the latest updates online and on air. Aisha, back to you. All right, those are a lot of inconveniences. Latasha, thanks for bringing us that update. Atlanta mayoral candidate Felicia Moore laid out her plans for public safety in the city and the future of the police department. Some of her key points were de-escalation with help from mental health workers, addressing what she says is a legacy racism and police brutality issue, also addressing the issue that leads to crime. Moore warned that the city cannot, quote, arrest its way out of this crisis. If we can't just fall back sort of on the policies that we've had over the last five or ten years, we need to create a 21st century police department where our officers see themselves as guardians and not warriors against crime. Moore says that as mayor, she would keep the Atlanta City Detention Center open and allow Fulton County to house prisoners there, citing what she called overcrowded conditions. You can find our full investigation on the city's latest plans for the city detention center by heading to 11alive.com on our app and looking under the scene on TV section. Candidates seeking election in statewide races in Georgia can now take more money from donors. The state's Ethics Commission voted on Thursday to increase the giving limit from $7,000 to $7,600. This amount is for both primary and general elections. The limits also went up for runoffs, House, Senate and local office races. Runoffs are now up to 4,500 from 4,100. House, Senate, and local office limits are now 3,000. The previous limit was 2,800. These changes go into effect immediately.
All right, did you happen to catch the sunrise this morning? It was pretty spectacular in a lot of areas across North Georgia. This is a photo from one of our 11 live storm trackers, Thomas, up in Dahlonega overlooking Mount Yona. I almost think that we're looking for Mount Doom here in the background because it's that vivid, that red color. Another photo from Atlanta from one of our 11 alive floor directors, Mark, sunrise here this morning. Wanted to start off by showing you that because Make every day a great day, and if you can see a sunrise like that, I think every day is a great day. Now we've got lots of sunshine, your lunch hour today. We had some patchy fog this morning, but overall things right now are mostly sunny outside. And with that sunshine, we're heating up quickly. 77 in Atlanta, but it is feeling more humid than where we were over the last several days. So the humidity is going to be creeping up. The temperatures are creeping up, and eventually our rain chances will follow. 79 in Covington. Canton is at 73 and Peachtree City right now is at 76. We'll climb up to the mid 80s today. I do expect overall a partly cloudy sky to mostly sunny sky throughout the afternoon. We are rain free today. Today marks our ninth day in a row rain free. We're going to talk about the return of those rain chances. Aisha coming up in just a couple of minutes. Tens of thousands of Georgia health care workers are facing a decision today. They must be vaccinated for COVID-19 or they could lose their job. Many Metro Atlanta hospitals set an October 1st deadline for their employees to be fully vaccinated. The mandate comes amid the shortage of health care workers, especially nurses. As of August, there were more than 37,000 nursing openings. Coming up tonight on 11 Alive News at 5, we're going to hear from the health care professionals who say mandating vaccines could make the health care workers shortage even worse. And just into our newsroom, Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh has tested positive for COVID-19. The Supreme Court says the justice was fully vaccinated back in January and has no symptoms. The justices were tested yesterday because they plan to be in the courtroom today for the formal in investiture ceremony for the court's newest justice, Amy Coney Barrett. The court says that as a precaution, Kavanaugh and his wife Ashley will not attend the ceremony. All new today, we've just learned the pharmaceutical company Merck will soon ask the FDA to authorize emergency use of an experimental COVID-19 pill. The company says the pill reduced COVID hospitalizations and deaths by half. When people were not vaccinated, they took it after getting infected. The study results have not been peer reviewed. If approved, it will be the first pill to be used to treat COVID-19. Governor Brian Kipp is still urging Georgians to get vaccinated. Yesterday, the governor announced the latest COVID numbers, but they deferred from the numbers the Department of Public Health released. For the sake of transparency, Hope Ford looked into the numbers and explains the difference. During an update on the status of COVID in Georgia, Governor Kemp had this to say. In terms of vaccinations, we now have over 53% of Georgians over the age of 12 fully vaccinated and over 64% with at least one dose. But if you look at the Georgia Department of Public Health's vaccine dashboard, the numbers are different. 47% of Georgians fully vaccinated and 54% with one dose. So why the difference? Listen to this part. 53% of Georgians over the age of 12 fully vaccinated over the age of 12 the population that's vaccine eligible here's the thing both sets of numbers are accurate how is that possible we went straight to the department of public health for an explanation epidemiologists look at the entire population when calculating their vaccine percentages that's because everyone regardless of age can get sick and spread COVID to other people since Kemp used just the vaccine eligible population which is a smaller population the vaccine rate is higher regardless of which data is used Georgia still ranks as one of the lowest for vaccination administration in the country. It's why the Department of Health told us, bottom line, everyone who is old enough to get vaccinated should get vaccinated. And it's why Kim continues to urge people to get the shot. Today I want to emphasize the importance of not waiting until the next wave of COVID cases to get vaccinated. Four for four. Your Atlanta Braves are once again NL East champs after sweeping the Philadelphia Phillies last night at Truist Park. This is the team's fourth NL East title, and they had to overcome a lot of obstacles to get to the postseason. It's the best feeling in the world. Um, you know, it's just such a long season, and um, you know, it's just, I just keep, I'm going to be by redundant, but I just, I'm so proud of these guys and what they overcame. You said you're playing well. Are you playing your best baseball right now collectively, you think? Team, yeah, we are. Um, we 
when you go out there and know you got a chance to win every night with our starting staff, that's all you can ask for because pitching is what's going to win in the postseason. you got to be able to win those games 2-1, to one, and we've been doing it lately. Really confident, and not about confident, but we just got to keep playing aggressive and don't take anything for granted. We're just going to go out there and do what we got to do. The Braves will wrap up the season at home against the Mets. The postseason begins next Friday with the best three out of five series on the road against the Milwaukee Brewers. Before we go to break, we want to wish a very special happy birthday to former President Jimmy Carter. The Georgia native turns 97 years young today. He is the oldest living president. It has been a big year for Mr. Carter. He returned to church after getting vaccinated in February and met with the current first family in April. He and Rosalind celebrated their 75th anniversary in July. Happy birthday. If you want to get in on the celebrations for the birthday man, head on over to our website 11alive.com and sign a digital birthday card. You can leave your well wishes and even upload a photo if you'd like. From all of us here at 11 Alive, we want to wish him a happy 97th birthday. Still to come, get ready to pay more for delivery. We're breaking down the new price hike at the U.S. Postal Service that starts today. Every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see even the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claim. You may see changes in your mail delivery time. Starting today, the U.S. Postal Service is implementing new service standards that could slow down your delivery service and in some cases make it more expensive. So more expensive for slower service. Yeah, you heard that right. Here are three things you need to know. First, the changes include cuts to post office hours and longer delivery times for certain mail. The USPS says delivery time for first class mail and periodicals could slow by 30%. They say service for larger items that typically take one to three days could now take five days. Second, 
Before you panic, this will not impact all of your mail. The USPS says mail going long distances will be impacted, but you won't see much of a difference if you're sending something locally. So what about the cost? The USPS says from October 3rd to December 26th, you're going to see a temporary increase in prices due to the high holiday demands. The Postal Service says this will not apply to anything you ship internationally. Though lawmakers prevented a government shutdown, they are still nowhere close to making a deal on the $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill. Will there be a vote in D.C. today? NBC's Peter Alexander tells us what's next at our nation's capital. No deal this morning after late night negotiations on the Hill failed to break a logjam between progressive and moderate Democrats. The White House and Democratic leaders from both the House and Senate still trying to hammer out a compromise that would make President Biden's domestic agenda a reality. Despite the delay, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi overnight expressing optimism. We're happy about today. Happy about today. Democrats still debating those two key proposals, a trillion dollar bipartisan infrastructure bill and a larger plan that would invest trillions more into health care, education and climate programs. One of the Senate's key swing votes, moderate Joe Manchin, revealing Thursday he would also support the bigger bill if its three and a half trillion dollar price tag shrank to one and a half trillion. Let's look at each bill with its own merits. There's a lot of good in both of them. We should be able to, to come to that agreement. Progressives pushing back against that smaller figure and threatening to vote down the infrastructure bill if the larger plan isn't ready to go. It comes as Congress narrowly averted a crisis of its own making, dodging a government shutdown just hours before a midnight deadline, approving funding through early December. President Biden signing the bill into law overnight. It really is uh, exciting to keep government open. <laughs> Still, lawmakers are no closer to resolving another self-inflicted crisis, a potentially catastrophic default on the nation's debt that would happen if Congress does not raise or suspend the country's borrowing limit by October 18th. Republicans so far have refused to help trying to make Democrats pay a political price for raising the debt ceiling on their own, even though it covers past spending approved by both parties. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen delivering this dire warning if Congress fails to act. Our country would likely face a financial crisis and economic recession as a result. Hey, before we get to our weather, I want to show you some incredible video that was taken last night. You may have seen what looks like a shooting star or heard what was a big boom might have rattled your house just before 11 o'clock last night. Was it a shooting star? Was it a meteor? This was the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft that was coming back into our atmosphere after being docked at the International Space Station for the last month. There's currently seven uh, people that are on the International Space Station, including Georgia Tech's own Shane Kimbrough. So that was very cool. A lot of people were posting on our 11 Live Storm Trackers Facebook group saying, what was that? What was that? That's what it was. We've got an article on 11live.com. You can get it on our app to read more about the Dragon spacecraft. All right, let's talk about the weather forecast for the rest of your Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. And we've got these bright blue skies overlooking Truist Park right now. P mostly sunny sky. I do think we'll turn partly cloudy overall for the afternoon, but it looks smooth sailing for that Braves game kicking off the series against the Mets this evening. So the rest of the afternoon will be climbing up from the upper 70s where we are right now into the mid 80s. About 85 my forecast high temperature today. And then this evening, very mild in the 70s for the Braves game or for those Friday evening Team 1-1 high school football game. So we have a great looking Friday forecast overall. Yes, we're warm and yes, it's a little bit more humid, but we're still staying rain free. In fact, this is our ninth day in a row that we're not going to have any rain at Hartsfield Jackson. We have not had any rain for the last seven days, but we're going to be transitioning the pattern. I'm calling this from famine to feast. No, we're not in a drought, but we haven't had any rain in nearly 10 days. And over the next week, once the water spigot turns on, yeah, it's going to be pretty unsettled for us. Over the next seven days, we could pick up one to three inches of rain. So that's a pretty big contrast from the dry stretch we've been in over the last week. Get your umbrellas ready to come back out, the rain boots, all of that. Won't be a washout each of these days ahead, but the pattern's certainly going to be much more unsettled starting later this weekend.
Let's show you what's going to happen. The change in the pattern. We've had this nice sunshine overall and dry stretch with high pressure and control, but humidity is rising the next couple of days and eventually our rain chances do all ahead of this next front. So this is going to slide in here Monday and as it's getting closer in our rain chances will be increasing as well. What's good about our setup is that I think the best rain chance holds off until we start the work week. So your weekend looks overall pretty decent. But starting late Sunday, I'm bringing back a 30% chance of a few showers and an isolated thunderstorm late Sunday afternoon and evening. You notice the rain chance goes up to 60% Monday, then 40% for Tuesday, and then our kind of unsettled pattern, we won't be able to shake it off all the way through next week. So these last couple of dry days, enjoy them. We may not have fully dry days for quite some time once the rain chances kick back in. Here's the forecast track for Sunday afternoon showing you maybe the Falcons game is wrapping up. It's still mostly dry, but the later in the day that we go Sunday, the better the chance is of a couple of showers and thunderstorms. Then once it starts going, we'll have these on and off showers and thunderstorms all the way through middle of next week at least. So just kind of recapping your weekend forecast. Warm and humid tomorrow, but still dry. It should be good out in Athens for the dogs and also for the Yellow Jackets in Atlanta. Isolated showers and thunderstorms mostly later on Sunday. Seven day forecast shows the unsettled pattern continues through middle of next week. The film industry could be gearing up for a possible strike as soon as Monday. Up next, how it could impact production here in Georgia and what it could mean for your favorite streaming shows. And I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant, and I love the way she researches stories. You're always going to get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked. 
A decision will be made Monday on whether or not a film strike will be implemented. A union representing filmmakers could shut down productions, impacting thousands of jobs here in Georgia. 11 Alive's Doug Richards takes a look at the potential impact on the film industry in the state. The strike authorization vote by itself would not bring movie production to a halt here in Georgia, but it would be an important first step. The editors, the production designers. In Buckhead, the movie under production is a whodunit called Reptile. Backstage at another location, a longtime sound tech says the onset hours are brutal. I work an average of 12 to 14 hours a day, every single day, six days a week. Is that typical? Yes, it is absolutely 100% normal for a film worker to work 70 to 80 hours a week every single week. Cujo Cooley says a strike would shut down all of it. Reptile is reportedly a Netflix movie. It's one of 50 movies now in production in Georgia. Cooley says workers have been discounting their services for Netflix and other streaming services productions because years ago they were considered experimental or new media. When we gave discounted rates for new media, that uh, that time has passed. Is this important enough to go on strike over? I am going to vote yes on the strike authorization. I do not want to go on strike. If the union authorizes a strike, the talks between the two sides would likely continue, but with a greater sense of urgency with the threat of a shutdown looming. ATL will be lit with stars tonight. The BET Awards is back and some locals are being honored. We'll tell you who's leading the pack with nominations next. I like the way that Chester will take the time to explain something and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like you're... 
We're just hours away from the 2021 BET Hip Hop Awards happening right here in Atlanta. This is some footage that you got from last year. Comedy trio 85 South returning as hosts. Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion lead the pack with nine nominations, followed by Drake with eight. Quite a few Atlanta artists are also nominated. We're talking 21 Savage, The Migos, both up for Album of the Year. Lil Baby is up for the highly coveted Artist of the Year. Lil Nas X for the Video of the Year. And Future is nominated under Best Duo or Rap for a Song or group that is for a song feature. The show is taped tonight and will air next Tuesday, October 5th. You're watching 11 Alive, where Atlanta speaks. 11 Alive News at noon starts now. news out of Henry County. You're looking live at Woodland High School in Stockbridge, where sheriff's deputies are investigating what's being called a possible copycat incident. They say a student took a picture of a picture showing the trigger of a gun. School officials tell us they have not been able to determine where the photo was taken or if it's even real. Earlier this week, a photo of a person holding a gun in what was believed to be a school bathroom was shared, sending that school on lockdown. Right now, the school is not on lockdown here and parents are being told not to come to the school. Stick with 11 Alive on air and online for the very latest here. Happening right now, a state fire marshal issues a safety notice about new violations discovered at an Atlanta apartment complex where a young man was killed in an elevator accident. This is video of a fire marshal leaving the building and handing out the notices to the media about an hour ago. 11 Alive's Latasha Gibbons is live near the complex on Highland Avenue. A lot of people didn't see this coming, Latasha. That's right, Aisha. Fire Marshal came, made a special trip to hand deliver this notice to residents. It has to do with the violations inspectors found with the boilers. As a result, the building doesn't have hot water. Now, residents we talked to say they are even more confused at this letter and they still don't feel safe. Let's take a closer look at this document. This letter is from the state insurance commissioner's office. It says inspectors have found, quote, numerous regulatory and safety violations involving the building's boilers and required emergency services services elevator. It goes on to say as a result, emergency services may be hampered. Residents and visitors should exercise due care and caution while on the premises. Back on September 13th, investigators say they examined the building's five boilers and found violations with each of them for allegedly being installed without permits or inspections. Now the state says it ordered one of them to be turned off until it was inspected and permitted. Now one resident told us she's been without hot water for three days now and didn't know why until this morning. She says not having an elevator and hot water is a major inconvenience. I guess I just have to live with it. I don't know. I don't really have a lot of options. I live on the 12th floor. I, I can physically do it. I just can't also. The, the only problem is I can't get groceries up there. So I have to eat out every day. Now the building has been under scrutiny since Jamarcus McFarland died back on August 31st after police say he became pinned between floors when the elevator suddenly dropped. Now investigators say several factors may have played a role, including the total weight of the passengers inside the elevator and possible elevator equipment failure. Investigators also found that the elevator's inspection certificate was expired. Now the building's owner is not only facing 15 violations, but also $12,000 in fines. We'll continue to follow this story and keep you updated. Aisha, back to you. All right, Latasha, the problems keep coming, but hopefully this means we're getting closer to some answers. Thank you. Atlanta mayoral candidate Felicia Moore laid out her plans for public safety in the city and also the future of the police department. Some of her key points were de-escalation with help from mental health workers, addressing what she says is a legacy racism and police brutality, and addressing the issues that lead to crime. Moore warned that the city cannot, quote, arrest its way out of this crisis. If we can't just fall back sort of on the policies that we've had over the last five or ten years, we need to create a 21st century police department where our officers see themselves as guardians and not warriors against crime. 
Moore says that as mayor, she would keep the Atlanta City Detention Center open and allow Fulton County to house prisoners there, citing what she called overcrowded conditions. You can find our full investigation on the city's latest plans for the City Detention Center by going to 11 Alive app and looking for it under the scene on TV section. Candidates seeking election in statewide races in Georgia can now take more money from donors. The State Ethics Commission voted on Thursday to increase the giving limit from $7,000 to $7,600. This amount is for both primary and general elections. The limits also went up for runoffs, House, Senate, and local office races. All right, so runoffs are now up to 4,500 from 4,100. House, Senate, and local office limits are now 3,000. The previous limit was 2,800. These changes go into effect immediately. I want to start off by showing you more of those great sunrise photos from this morning that you guys, our 11 Alive Storm Tracker, sent in. This one from Woodstock. Tom Howell snapped this photo, and it was the second morning in a row. I think he's got he's gotten a great photo that he shared with us from Woodstock. Look at the colors at the bottom of the horizon, that beautiful hue of pink and orange and almost purple showing up. But now we've got lots of sunshine with those puppy cumulus clouds in the background overlooking North Georgia right now. So this is overlooking Truist Park. We have a game at 720 tonight. Temperatures in Atlanta are now up to 79 degrees at your lunch hour. It is feeling a little bit more humid outside, but we're going to hold on to a rain free forecast for your Friday. We'll be climbing up into the 80s pretty soon in Atlanta, and that's where we already are in Covington and Peachtree City. We're still in the upper 70s, though, in the North Georgia mountains in Blairsville right now at 78. So throughout the afternoon, I expect a mostly sunny to partly cloudy sky. Those puppy cumulus clouds are going to be building up, but don't expect them to squeeze out any raindrops. We'll be up to about 85 today. This is our ninth day that we have had no rain in Atlanta. The pattern's going to change. I'll talk about that coming up in just a few minutes. Aisha. Tens of thousands of Georgia healthcare workers are facing a decision today. They must be vaccinated for COVID-19 or they could lose their jobs. Many Metro Atlanta hospitals set an October 1st deadline for their employees to be fully vaccinated. The mandate comes amid the shortage of health care workers, especially nurses. As of August, there were more than 37,000 nurse openings. Coming up tonight on 11 Alive News at 5, we're hearing from the health care professionals who say mandating the vaccines could make the health care workers shortage even worse. And just in, Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh has tested positive for COVID-19. The Supreme Court announced it today, saying the justice was fully vaccinated back in January and has no symptoms. The justices were tested yesterday because they plan to be in the courtroom today for the formal investiture ceremony for the court's newest justice, Amy Coney Barrett. The court said that as a precaution, Kavanaugh and his wife Ashley will not attend the ceremony. All new today, we've just learned the pharmaceutical company Merck will soon ask health officials in the U.S. and around the world to authorize use of an experimental COVID-19 pill. The company says the pill reduces hospitalizations and deaths by half and people recently infected with the virus. The study results have not been peer reviewed, but if approved, the pill would be the first shown to treat COVID-19. Governor Brian Kemp is still urging Georgians to get vaccinated. Yesterday, the governor announced the latest COVID numbers, but they deferred from the numbers the Department of Public Health released for the sake of transparency. Hope for it looked into the numbers and explains the difference. During an update on the status of COVID in Georgia, Governor Kemp had this to say. In terms of vaccinations, we now have over 53% of Georgians over the age of 12 fully vaccinated and over 64% with at least one dose. But if you look at the Georgia Department of Public Health's vaccine dashboard, the numbers are different. 47% of Georgians fully vaccinated and 54% with one dose. So why the difference? Listen to this part. 53% of Georgians over the age of 12 fully vaccinated over the age of 12 the population that's vaccine eligible here's the thing both sets of numbers are accurate how is that possible we went straight to the department of public health for an explanation 
population. Epidemiologists look at the entire population when calculating their vaccine percentages. That's because everyone, regardless of age, can get sick and spread COVID to other people. Since Kemp used just the vaccine eligible population, which is a smaller population, the vaccine rate is higher. Regardless of which data is used, Georgia still ranks as one of the lowest for vaccination administration in the country. It's why the Department of Health told us, bottom line, everyone who is old enough to get vaccinated should get vaccinated. And it's why Kim continues to urge people to get the shot. Hey, I want to emphasize the importance of not waiting until the next wave of COVID cases to get vaccinated. Four for four. Your Atlanta Braves are once again NLE's champs after sweeping the Philadelphia Phillies last night at Truist Park. This is the team's fourth NLE's title, and they had to overcome a lot of obstacles to get to the postseason. It's the best feeling in the world. Um, you know, it's just such a long season, and um, you know, it's just I just keep. I'm gonna be by redundant, but I just I'm so proud of these guys and what they overcame. You said you're playing well. Are you playing your best baseball right now, collectively? You think? Uh, team, yeah, we are. Um, when you go out there and know you got a chance to win every night with our starting staff, that's all you can ask for because pitching is what's gonna win in the postseason. You gotta be able to win those games two to one, and we've been doing it lately. Really confident, and not about confident, but we just gotta keep playing aggressive and don't take anything for granted. We're just gonna go out there, and do what we gotta do. The postseason begins next Friday with the best three out of five series on the road against the Milwaukee Brewers. Get ready to pay more for delivery. We're breaking down the new price hike at the U.S. Postal Service that starts today. Subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News, stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays five to seven. Just Lee, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely... You may see changes in your mail delivery time starting today. The U.S. Postal Service is implementing new service standards that could slow down your delivery service, and in some cases, it's going to be more expensive. Here are three things you need to know. First, the changes include cuts to post office hours and longer delivery times for certain mail. USPS says delivery time for first class mail and periodicals could slow down by 30%. They say service for larger items that typically takes one to three days could now take five days. Second, before you panic, this will not impact all of your mail. 
The USPS says mail going long distances. Yeah, that's going to be impacted, but you won't see much of a difference if you're sending something locally. So what about the cost? The USPS says from October 3rd to December 26th, you will see a temporary increase in prices. They say this is due to the holiday demands. The Postal Service says this won't apply to anything you ship internationally. Though lawmakers prevented a government shutdown, they're still nowhere close to making a deal on the $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill. Will there be a vote in D.C. today? NBC's Peter Alexander tells us what's next at our nation's capital. No deal this morning after late night negotiations on the Hill failed to break a logjam between progressive and moderate Democrats. The White House and Democratic leaders from both the House and Senate still trying to hammer out a compromise that would make President Biden's domestic agenda a reality. Despite the delay, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi overnight expressing optimism. We'll have your vote today. Have your vote today. Democrats still debating those two key proposals, a trillion dollar bipartisan infrastructure bill and a larger plan that would invest trillions more into health care, education and climate programs. One of the Senate's key swing votes, moderate Joe Manchin, revealing Thursday he would also support the bigger bill if its three and a half trillion dollar price tag shrank to one and a half trillion. Let's look at each bill that's on merits. There's a lot of good in both of them. We should be able to, to come to that agreement. Progressives pushing back against that smaller figure and threatening to vote down the infrastructure bill if the larger plan isn't ready to go. It comes as Congress narrowly averted a crisis of its own making, dodging a government shutdown just hours before a midnight deadline, approving funding through early December. President Biden signing the bill into law overnight. It really is uh, exciting to keep government open. <laughs> Still, lawmakers are no closer to resolving another self-inflicted crisis, a potentially catastrophic default on the nation's debt that would happen if Congress does not raise or suspend the country's borrowing limit by October 18th. Republicans so far have refused to help trying to make Democrats pay a political price for raising the debt ceiling on their own, even though it covers past spending approved by both parties. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen delivering this dire warning if Congress fails to act. Our country would likely face a financial crisis and economic recession as a result. Okay, let's start off and show you something that's not weather, but really cool that was in the sky last night. Not a shooting star, but this was a SpaceX Dragon spacecraft or capsule that was coming back down to Earth that you could see in Georgia last night. This was about 10 minutes before 11 o'clock and you might have seen the light streak in the sky. You might have also heard or felt the boom. That was it breaking the sound barrier as it's trying to slow down coming through our atmosphere, which has more friction to it. So very cool. And a lot of you were sharing your comments of how you were kind of startled yesterday evening on our 11 Alive Storm Trackers Facebook group. If you want to join in the conversation, I've also linked an article to more on this capsule there. All right, weather wise outside. Look at this. A live look at our Georgia's Rome camera. Look at these puppy cumulus clouds in the background. It's a summer like middle of the day out there. We've got the flags kind of blowing, so there's a little bit of a light breeze, but it is turning into a warm and slightly humid afternoon as well. I expect temperatures to continue climbing into the low and mid 80s today, about five degrees above average for this time of year. Then this evening, whether you're going to high school team one one football games or maybe you're going to be headed to the Braves this evening, we should see temperatures in the 70s under a fair sky. I don't expect any rain to impact those Friday evening activities, so that will be nice. But our pattern is really going to be changing here over the next couple of days through the weekend. The last week, in fact, the last nine days in a row, we haven't had any rain in Atlanta. I'm calling it from famine to feast because the water spigot's going to turn on and we're going to get a lot of rain over the next week, or at least the chance of rain. We're not actually in a drought, but it has been drying out over the last week. Over the next week, we could pick up anywhere from one to as much as three inches of rain in some spots. This is the outlook from the Weather Prediction Center showing you see all the purple and burgundy colors. That's one to three inches of rain, so it will not be raining every day at your house all day, but that summer like pattern where there's a chance of some showers and thunderstorms each day that returns to North Georgia starting the end of the weekend all the way through most of next week. So it'll feel kind of summer like outside in a sense because of the higher humidity and rain 
chances, excuse me. All right, let me show you the forecast track and the big picture setup. Clouds are going to be building in each afternoon, just bubbly cumulus clouds, but we're still going to hang on to, I think, a mostly dry forecast tomorrow. But as this next front slides in closer to our area by the end of the weekend and early next week, that's when our rain chances will increase. So I think our best rain chance will hold off until we get into the Monday time frame. That's good for your weekend plans, but it doesn't mean it's going to be dry for everybody's weekend altogether. I do think tomorrow looks okay for those college football games tomorrow afternoon. If you're going to be maybe doing a picnic outside or doing some yard work, you'll still be able to get that in. We'll be up in the mid 80s with a partly sunny sky, but by Sunday, especially later Sunday, we'll bring back some isolated showers and thunderstorms. Right now I've got the rain chance for Sunday at 30%. You notice Monday is our highest rain chance at 60%, but once we start this wetter pattern, each and every day we'll have a chance of some scattered showers and thunderstorms out there. So you'll just want to keep the rain gear handy. The backyard will get some uh, nice rain in the rain gauge here over the next week. So it should be dry for the Georgia game out at Sanford Stadium. We should be in the low 80s for that. And also can't forget about my yellow jackets will be partly cloudy and warm there as well with temperatures climbing into the 80s as they take on Pittsburgh. Here's your seven day outlook. 60% rain chance for Monday. We'll keep that unsettled pattern going with daily scattered storms through most of next week. Aisha. Apps like Venmo and Cash App are super convenient. You can send rent to your roommate or your landlord, even pay your friend back for dinner. But will using those apps impact your taxes? Our Verify team is getting answers. Viral posts on social media claim anyone who receives more than $600 in transactions from cash apps like Venmo and PayPal will face a new tax. Now people are concerned that rent payments and dinner reimbursements sent through the apps will also be taxed. Verify viewer Tina asked, next year will I be sent a 1099 for using money apps like Venmo and Zelle after $600 worth of money has been sent to me? So is that true? Let's verify. Our sources are Steve Rosenthal, a senior fellow at the Tax Policy Center at the Urban Institute, David Super, a tax law professor at Georgetown University, and the American Rescue Act of 2021. Let's start with the current law. Individuals owe taxes on any income earned over $600, including if you're paid via app. Since 2008, cash apps have been required to send 1099K forms to customers who use the apps to receive income more than $20,000 and have 200 transactions or more in a calendar year. But Steve Rosenthal says lawmakers thought that threshold was too high to successfully capture all reportable income that would help close the tax gap. Relatively few 1099Ks uh, were sent out. But next year, the threshold is going to be much lower. So what changes on January 1st, 2022? Well, that's when the threshold drops to $600 and there's no transaction minimum. Now there are going to be many more 1099Ks reported. That does not mean uh, just because you receive an information report that you have taxable income. If you receive more than $600 from a friend or family member as a gift or reimbursement, like shared utilities or travel costs, Rosenthal says you may receive a 1099-K form from the app, but you won't have to report the transaction to the IRS as an earning. According to David Super, a tax law professor at Georgetown University, quote, this proposal does not change what is taxable or what is deductible. It merely seeks to achieve more honest reporting about what income is received and what deductible expenses are made, unquote. So we can verify this claim as true. You likely will receive a 1099K from a money app if you receive more than $600 on the app in a year, but that doesn't mean you owe more taxes. The film industry could be gearing up for a possible strike as soon as Monday. Up next, how it could impact production here in Georgia and what it could mean for your favorite streaming shows. Professionalism. You can see the, the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Live News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. 
Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is... A decision will be made Monday on whether or not a film strike will be implemented. A union representing filmmakers could shut down productions impacting thousands of jobs here in Georgia. 11 Alive's Doug Richards takes a look at the potential impact on the film industry in the state. The strike authorization vote by itself would not bring movie production to a halt here in Georgia but it would be an important first step. The editors, the production designers. In Buckhead, the movie under production is a whodunit called Reptile. Backstage at another location, a longtime sound tech says the onset hours are brutal. I work an average of 12 to 14 hours a day, every single day, six days a week. Is that typical? Yes. It is absolutely 100% normal for a film worker to work 70 to 80 hours a week every single week. Cujo Cooley says a strike would shut down all of it. Reptile is reportedly a Netflix movie. It's one of 50 movies now in production in Georgia. Cooley says workers have been discounting their services for Netflix and other streaming services productions because years ago they were considered experimental or new media. When we gave discounted rates for new media, that uh, that time has passed. Is this important enough to go on strike over? I am going to vote yes on the strike authorization. I do not want to go on strike. If the union authorizes a strike, the talks between the two sides would likely continue, but with a greater sense of urgency with the threat of a shutdown looming. One student had a great excuse to miss history class. What his teacher had to say when he tells her he's having lunch with Alexander Hamilton. I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11alive.com slash locked on. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscasts. And watch on demand. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. Crash is definitely the funniest. He makes it enjoyable as far as uh, um, the traffic, be it good or bad. He just feels like your Uncle Joe that's on the show that's out there to make everybody laugh. You feel comfortable yet bring important traffic reports. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. They come in every day with the same spirit, with the same professionalism. You can see the passion that comes with their reporting. Even delivering the bad news is just a great environment that they're presenting to us. How can you really tell whether a viral story is true or false? 11 Lives Verify breaks down the claims with facts and experts so you can know whether you're seeing truth or misinformation. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays five to seven. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves, Bulldogs. Expert analysis on Atlanta and SEC sports. Listen and subscribe at 11. 
If you're going to skip history class, having one of the nation's founding fathers over for lunch is one of the best excuses you can use. Mr. Rossner, this is Lynn Manuel Miranda. I'm sorry uh, he can't be in U.S. history class right now, but he's with me. We're going to go over Bill of Rights um, and anything you may be covering right now. We cover we cover a lot of it in about two and a half hours at Hamilton, but we're going to go over it in specifics now. So this is not lost time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for excusing him from class. Lynn Manuel Miranda recorded this video for Centennial High School junior Luke Stevens, whose teacher didn't believe his excuse for skipping her class. While Miranda is not a founding father himself, you'll likely recognize him as the title character from the hit Broadway show Hamilton, which he also wrote. He was in town for a voting rights fundraiser hosted by Luke's mom. I'm sure that was Luke's first time wanting to actually tag along with his mom, right? <laughs> Luke's teacher is a fan of Hamilton and uses the songs from the show as part of her lessons. One of the best Broadway shows out there. Thanks for watching 11 Alive News at noon. Have a great weekend. Watch Verify only on 11 Alive News. Morning news is just a little bit of everything to give everyone what they need to start their day. Chesley does a fantastic job of making it relatable and making it digestible. Crash with traffic makes it so interesting and I love his energy. Francesca is so smart and brilliant and I love the way she researches stories. You're always gonna get the most accurate information. Watch Aisha, Francesca, Chesley, and Crash on the 11 Alive Morning News weekdays 5 to 7. Justly, I just think that he's a great weather guy. He really knows what he's doing. I love the weather because Chesley has been absolutely fabulous. I like the way that Chesley will take the time to explain something, and I feel like I'm sitting in his classroom. The Locked On Podcast is your new place to keep up with your team every day. Falcons, Hawks, Braves.